Bible speaks of three interesting books. It speaks about the book of life, the book of remembrance, and the book of iniquity. These three books are often misunderstood, but friend, it's important for those who wait upon the coming of the Lord to understand the nature of each of these three heavenly books. Take a look at this. This is a warning for all those whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, who have rejected the loving sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. Take heed. And I, John, saw a great way throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. My name is Brent Hornfield, and I'm a Seventh-day Adventist Christian, and this is the Advent Message. The Bible speaks of books of God, but what are these books, and what do they contain? Let's begin by looking at two well-known passages of Scripture. The first Scripture is taken from the book of Daniel, chapter 7. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. Oh, friend, what a grand scene is described here. Can you just picture it? Use your sanctified imagination. What a glorious sight that is. 
Okay, now let's turn to our second scripture, which is found in the very last book of the Bible, book of Revelation. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. Praise God. But that sounds quite ominous, doesn't it? I mean, that text reveals Him, God, as a God of justice. The Bible uses the term Book of Life. Would you like to have your name or find your name written in the Book of Life? I know I would. Who wouldn't want God to place their name inside a book that is written by the life giver himself? Oh friend, I would. Here's a quote taken from one of my favorite Bible passages. Here's, here's, here's what it says. Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Luke 10, 20. What a joyous promise that comes directly from the lips of our Savior. Now, you may ask the question, is my name written there? It is registered in that book of life, friend, if you have a character that is pure and holy, like the character of Christ. You see, faith in the truth alone will not save us. We must be like Jesus if we shall one day see him as he is. When we become children of God, our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and they remain there until the time of the investigative judgment. Christ says of the overcomer, I will not blot out his name out of the Book of Life. The names of all those who have once given themselves to God are written in the Book of Life, and their characters are now passing in review before Him. Imagine that. Angels of God are weighing moral worth. They're looking at us, and they're weighing our moral worth. They're watching the development of character in those who are now living to see if their names can be retained in the Book of Life. A probation is granted us in which to wash our robes in the character and make them white in the blood of the Lamb. Well, the question is asked, who is, this, who is doing this work? Who is separating from himself sin and selfishness? You're dead, says the Apostle Paul, of the true followers of Christ, and your life is hid with Christ in God. So when we're alive to God, we're dead to self. Oh, may God help us to die to self. Whose names will not be blotted out of the book of life? Only in the names of those who have loved God with all the powers of their being and their neighbors as themselves. After the saints changed their mortality and caught up together with Jesus, after they received their harps and their robes and their crowns, and after they entered the city, Jesus and the saints sit in judgment. The books are opened, the books of life and the book of death. The book of life contains the good deeds of the saints, and the book of death contains the evil deeds of the wicked. So, we conclude that entrance into the book of life requires love to God and obedience to His will. Now let's take a look at the book of remembrance. What is this book? What does it mean for us? It is called the book of remembrance and everyone who has ever believed in Jesus Christ has one. Malachi the prophet made a reference to this book. Listen to what he says. Then they that fear the Lord spake often to one another, and the Lord hearkened, and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord, and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. <clears throat> this book of remembrance holds every act of faithful service for the Lord, every encouraging word, every unselfish deed, every sacrifice made. The Lord has carefully placed there as a witness to the universe that you are indeed His child. 
this book is directly connected with another very important book called the Book of Life. If a name is removed from the Book of Life, that person's good deeds will also be removed from the Book of Remembrance. Both of these books play a vital role during the time of the judgment. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Satan will stand to accuse us before God that we are not worthy of eternal life. He will point to all our sins and lay our faults in the worst possible light, declaring that we don't deserve any more than he does to be saved. Revelation 12 then calls Satan the accuser of the brethren, which accuse them before our God day and night. Jesus does not excuse our sins, friend, but rather points to the immortalized record of our lives and show Satan that every one of those sins have been confessed and forgiven by him, that his blood covers them, and, not, and only our good deeds remain. Well, this is very good news for us. We must remember, however, not to take the mercy of God and His grace lightly by trying to cover up or ignore our sins. They must be confessed and forsaken. In the books of heaven are accurately recorded everything, the trivial remarks of sinners who pay no heed to mercy as Christ is presented to them by His ministering saints. As the artist takes on the polished glass, a true picture of the human face, so the angels of God daily place upon the books of heaven an exact representation of the character of every human being. Sins that have not been repented of and forsaken will not be pardoned and blotted out of the record, but will stand as a witness against us in the judgment. May we search our hearts, friend, sincerely, and make things right with God so that our life story may be shared throughout the endless ages. Finally, we examine what the Word of God says about the Book of Iniquity, or as it is sometimes called, the Book of Judgment. God knows and has a record of everything. Every wrong word, every selfish act, every unfulfilled duty, every secret sin with every artful dissembling is entered in the books of heaven with terrible exactness. God has an exact catalog of every unjust account and every unfair dealing. We are held responsible not only for what we have done, but for what we have left undone for undeveloped characters and unimproved opportunities. And as the typical cleansing of the earthly was accomplished by the removal of the sins by which it had been polluted. So the actual cleansing of the heavenly is to be accomplished by the removal or blotting out of the sins which are there recorded. But before this can be accomplished, there must be an examination of the books of record to determine who, through repentance of sin and faith in Christ, are entitled to the benefits of his atonement. The cleansing of the sanctuary, therefore, involves a work of investigation, a work of judgment. But why was an investigation necessary in the first place? Weren't sins, when confessed, immediately forgiven and forever forgotten? Friend, forgive me, yes, but not yet forgotten. In the wilderness sanctuary, See, the blood of the sin offering removed the sin from the penitent, but it rested in the sanctuary until the Day of Atonement. So in the antitype, the blood of Christ, while it was to release the repentant sinner from the condemnation of the law, was not to cancel the sin. It would stand on record in the sanctuary until the final atonement. After the dead are judged out of those things which were written in the books, then by virtue of the atoning blood of Christ, the sins of all the truly penitent will be blotted from the books of heaven. Thus the sanctuary will be freed or cleansed from sin. In the typical service, only those who had come before God with confession and repentance and whose sins through the blood of the sin offering 
were transferred to the sanctuary had a part in the service of the Day of Atonement. So in the great day of final atonement and, and investigative judgment, the only cases considered are those of the professed people of God. The judgment of the wicked is a distinct and separate work, and it takes place at a later period. The judgment of the dead began in 1844, and when that work shall be completed, judgment is to be pronounced upon the living. How soon will the judgment of the living begin? Well, Ella White answers this question. She says, soon, none know how soon, it'll pass in the cases of the living. Though we don't know how soon, and we do know that the great work of judgment, judging the living, is about to begin. O oh, Saint, God is a loving and just God. He has three books that contain the names of all of us, regardless of what, where we find ourselves. We will be judged according to the information written in those books. Whether we are saved or lost will depend on our reactions and our actions and our attitudes. My prayer is that you make a commitment right now to confess and forsake sin so that your name will be a permanent record in the Lamb's Book of Life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, these three books are very important that we've just studied. Oh God, our prayer, our sincere wish is that our names are written in the Book of Life permanently. Help us, Lord, to communicate this important message to others also. Prepare us for your soon coming. Take away every stain of sin from our lives. And help us, O oh Lord, to look forward to that time when we will indeed join with the throngs of your saints on that great getting up morning. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that's it for today. I thank you for joining me today and always remember, God loves you. Yes, he really, really does love you. <laughs>